I'd now like to invite Amini Kujunju to the stage to present the AAI 2014 Lifetime Achievement Award to His Excellency, President Alassane Ouattara, President of the Republic of Cote d'Ivoire. Hi. It is such a, an honor for me to present the AAI 2014 Lifetime Achievement Award to His Excellency President Alassane Ouattara, President of the Republic of Côte d'Ivoire, one of AI's distinguished alumni. AI is proud to honor His Excellency with this award for his achievements in working towards social economic progress in Africa and globally by promoting regional and global partnerships through his lifelong career as a public servant. An economist by training, President Ouattara launched his career working at the International Monetary Fund. He went on to serve as an economist and later governor of the Central Bank of West African States. Ivorian President Oufouet Bonnier tapped him to become his Minister of Economics and Finance to help bring the country out of an economic crisis. He was later appointed as Prime Minister of the country. He returned to the IMF where he rose to the position of Deputy Managing Director. He ran for President of Côte d'Ivoire and was sworn in as President in 2011. President Ouattara has earned a reputation in being a champion of transparency and good governance. He assumed the role of economic, of the, I'm sorry, he assumed the chair of the Economic Community of West African States from 2012 to 2014, where he worked to strengthen West Africa's regional integration. As an esteemed alumnus of AAI, President Ouattara was the recipient of AAI's African Graduate Fellowship Program, or AFGRAD as it's known. <laughs> In 1972, where he received a PhD from the University of Pennsylvania. <laughs> Since 1961, AI has, has, is proud to have administered scholarships and training opportunities to more than 300 Ivorians like President Ouattara who have gone on to become leaders in public, nonprofit, private sector in Cote d'Ivoire and globally. Ladies and gentlemen, it is my distinct pleasure to present the AI 2014 Lifetime Achievement Award to His Excellency Alassane Ouattara President of the Republic of Côte d'Ivoire. She, she wanted to hold it for me. I said, no, I don't want her to go with it. <laughs> I, I, I want to keep it. <laughs> so thank you very much. And uh, it's really a moment of uh, intense emotion for me. When I mean, I was uh, saying uh, what uh, AI did for me, I said, well, about whom she's talking. I'm only 50 years old, and she's talking about things dating back to 1960 and 62 and so forth. <laughs> so really, uh, I'm grateful to the African American Institute, and uh, uh, we came here, a few of us. In fact, our group of uh, students who arrived here in, uh, I don't even remember when anymore. <laughs> When we arrived uh, here, I think in 62, and uh, I have a, our ambassador in Paris was with me, so he's uh, also 
a former African American Institute. And then uh, our ambassador here was our, the second president of Cote d'Ivoire, Henri Conan Bédier, who is uh, the ally uh, of uh, my party and holds the chair uh, of uh, prime minister. So his party and mine are allied to govern Cote d'Ivoire. What I'd like to say is um, African American Institute, the African American Institute has done a lot for many of us in Africa. And I think uh, it's our turn to, to really share uh, this contribution. And I was telling my sister that uh, one possibility would be for her to ask uh, some of the African countries, although we have uh, budgetary requirements constrained by the IMF, but uh, <laughs> we will find ways to, to contribute to a fund to help African universities through the African American Institute. This is a proposal I'd like to make. Yes. So we are grateful that uh, General Electric, Chevron, and others are uh, uh, contributing to, to finance and to help the African American Institute. But we owe so much uh, to America, to the African American Institute, and to all of you here that I thought that uh, this should be our way to help the future generation of Africans. And I'm uh, so proud to be here tonight. Uh, when uh, I arrived in this country nearly half a century ago, it was a completely different America. And uh, so over this half century, this country has shown that uh, it is uh, one of the best places in the world. Thank you very much. And once again, congratulations to His Excellency President Alassane Ouattara on receiving the Lifetime Achievement Award. I'd like to now invite Shaka Sali, host of Voice of America's Straight Talk Africa, to the stage. Now, you may know and you should know, Mr. Sali is a renowned Ugandan-born journalist who has interviewed world leaders and leading newsmakers on the African affairs as host of Straight Talk Africa for more than a decade. He will moderate tonight's conversation with the honorees. The conversation will begin after the presentation of awards to the three remaining distinguished honorees. Please welcome Mr. Sali. Gentlemen, I'd like to now introduce Mahen Benetti, founder and executive director of the African Film Festival, who will present the AAI 2014 Distinguished Alumnus Award to Professor Thandika Mkandiwire. Good evening. Tonight, I'm pleased to present the AAI 2014 Distinguished Alumnus Award to an esteemed alumnus of the African American Institute, Professor Tandika Mukadawere. <laughs> Professor Mukadawere is one of the world's leading economists and scholars of African development and globalization. He was the first person to assume the position of chair of African development at the London School of Economics, which he still holds, and is current, currently the Olaf Harm Professor for Peace with the Institute for Future Studies in Stockholm. Professor Mokandawere has penned numerous scholarly pieces exploring some of Africa's greatest social, political, and developmental challenges, including rethinking Africa's re-industrialization and regional cooperation, what is the best way forward. An accomplished man of Malawian origin, 
He's also the former director of the United Nations Research Institute for Social Development. Professor Mukandawere is an alumnus of AAI's African Scholarship Program of American Universities. He earned his Bachelor's of Arts and Master's of Arts degrees in economics at Ohio State University and a doctorate in letters from Rhodes University. Additionally, he has been awarded honorary doctorates by the universities of Helsinki and Ghana. It is an honor, it truly is an honor, and where are you? To invite Professor Tandika Mukandawere to the stage to accept the AAI 2014 Distinguished Alumnus Award. <laughs> I'm sorry, I'm mangled your name. <laughs> really good. Thank you very much. Thank you. It's extremely dis difficult to express oneself at such an occasion, except I have to say I'm extremely grateful to express once again my, my gratitude to, to, to the AI for, for the award, but also for having given me a chance as a young person to come to the US to study. And I came into the US, turned out, Mr. President, in 1962. <laughs> um, I talked to one of the alumni, alumni here about how they traveled to the U.S. because that tells you a lot the difference between different alumni. Uh, I came around the most complicated way of getting here, but also the most educative way. We tra I traveled from Malawi, Malawi, uh, Zimbabwe, Zimbabwe, Kinshasa, Kinshasa, Belize, Belize, Paris, Paris, La Havre, and then by, and then by boat to New York. <laughs> I think we were, <laughs> uh, we were, I think the last group that took that route that, uh, by boat and, and I'm extreme, and, and I think if I were to think about my life, what AI, AI gave me uh, shaped pretty much everything that I, I, ever, I, I became. I would also like to say something about AI which is very, perhaps one forgets, in these 80s and 90s, Many institutions lost interest in higher education in Africa. There was a theory that if uh, that it, higher education didn't yield as much returns as primary school, and many of the funders simply withdrew from universities. And AI kept up the, the fight for higher education. And I think I'd like to convey to for, uh, to the authority, to the leadership of the, of the institute, our deep gratitude for holding on. And finally. Um, I, would like, I, have not, I wish I had an opportunity earlier to thank uh, the AI and the many other institutions that were involved in bringing us here. There was the experiment in international living who, who, took our, you know, who sponsored our, our stay with, with American families, the, of course the American universities uh, that's, uh, that provided a scholarship uh, to universities and the, the, of course the AI which uh, mobilized the whole story. Um, I'd like to take this opportunity to thank them very much for the opportunity. It's been it's difficult to, exp to understand today, 50 years on, what it meant then to come to the U.S. It was a wonderful experience, and one learned a lot, and I'm most, most grateful for that opportunity. Thank you very much. Congratulations, Professor Mkanda Wire, once again. Now, Dana Hyde, Chief Executive Officer of the Millennium Challenge Corporation, will now present the AAI 2014 Corporate Responsibility Award to General Electric. My goodness, what a privilege it is to be here this evening in this beautiful hall with this community and to join the Africa America Institute in celebrating this year's honorees. As many of you know, the Millennium Challenge Corporation was founded on the principle of partnership. And for the past 30 years, AAI has cultivated partners throughout the globe to build Africa's human capacity, its leadership, 
and its skills. Tonight's honoree exemplifies what is possible when the public and the private sector work together in pursuit of a sustainable future for Africa. And at the fore of that effort is General Electric. Today, GE has over 1,800 employees working in 35 African countries. Its business partnerships across the continent help equip communities with new tools, technologies, elevate ideas that are addressing some of the toughest challenges, and build the skills and the human capital that is fueling Africa's economic growth. The foundation has invested more than $120 million in improving the quality of health care and access to clean water available throughout the continent. But just last month, GE took its commitment to Africa to a new level. As part of the U.S. Africa Leaders Summit, GE committed to investing $2 billion in facility development, skills training, and sustainability initiatives across Africa by 2018. That deserves an applause. <laughs> it does. Uh, at the Millennium Challenge Corporation, we know firsthand about GE's commitment to Africa. As many of you know, over 60% of MCC's portfolio is invested in Africa. And socially responsible corporations such as GE are at the core of MCC's mission, which is reducing poverty through economic growth. So last month, when as part of the Africa Summit, MCC signed with Ghana, a $500 million compact to transform its power sector, GE was first among the private sector partners ready to step in with its own investment. For the people of Ghana, we know that means a reduction in the unpredictable and uncontrolled outages, and that households will finally be able to transition from kerosene lamps to reliable connections. Building on our work in Ghana, MCC and GE are optimistic about developing opportunities in other African countries and continuing to forge partnerships that create growth, that create opportunity, and a better quality of life on the continent. It is therefore my distinct honor and privilege this evening to present AAI's 2014 Corporate Responsibility Award to General Electric and to its leader, the President and CEO of General Electric Africa, Jay Ireland. Thank you, Dana. Good evening, everybody. Your Excellency, congratulations. And uh, I did want to put a plug in that we opened our Abidjan Cote d'Ivoire office a few months ago, so we're very happy to be there. Um, four years ago, uh, our board decided to put a lot more focus on developing uh, the developing world and, one of the, and putting senior leaders in, in different regions. And one of those regions was Sub-Saharan Africa. I had never been to Africa but I had raised my hand to go. And people always ask me what was the most surprising thing that you, that you found out when you landed in Nairobi, Kenya, where I live now. And I said one of the things that I, I was, I'm still amazed every day is the optimism, the entrepreneurial spirit, and the capabilities of the African people. And most importantly, <clears throat> thanks. Most importantly, the African youth. So for us, as we, we began our journey, we had been in Africa for over 100 years in different businesses. But as we, as we looked at it from a standpoint of 1GE, we wanted to really focus on one key thing, and that was building out the economies. I think every multinational has a responsibility as they go into a region to just not sell products that will help, obviously, grow economies. We're an infrastructure company across a number of different segments. But most importantly, we have to, we have to expand the base case of economic development. And most of that is going to be through skills building. So at GE, we focused in the last three years on skills building. We have a program that we put all of our corporate social responsibility under the word, word Kujenga, which means to build in Swahili. We equip, we empower, and we enable. And we do that through grants, through our employees, all 1,800, about 98% of them are African. 
and over 70% are less than three years with our company. So we're, again, optimistic, optimistic people, which I love to work with every day. But fundamentally, we need to change the dynamic, and you do that through skills building, building a broad base of capabilities, especially in technical and engineering areas. And that's why I'd like to congratulate the, African, uh, the AAI for what they've been doing uh, the last few decades, because it's absolutely critical. So we are focused on curriculum development with universities across the continent. We're focused on developing internships to show kids what it's like to work in businesses. We are giving scholarships to high school and college age um, children or young adults uh, across the continent to again in increase their skills base, focusing in on skills base and supplier based training. So again, a, a broader capability because if we don't see the African economies grow, companies like ours don't sell a lot. And I think that's our responsibility is to, is to do that in a broader way. So I thank you for the recognition. It's something that's close to my heart. I think it's one, something that I hope GE can always leave a, a, a turbine, an x-ray machine, an uh, aircraft engine, some oil and gas equipment, a locomotive. But most importantly, we're going to leave a number and growing number of skills, skilled African workers, African leaders, and I look forward to that day as Africa continues to grow. Thank you. Now, the next presenter warned me backstage to get her name right. <laughs> no pressure then. But here goes. Anne Kabogambe is Chief of Staff and Director of Cabinet in the Office of the President at the African Development Bank. Ms. Kabogambe is representing Donald Kabaruka, President of the African Development Bank. Thank you, Aisha. Um, and uh, good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, I have very short time, but please allow me to recognize the president of Cote d'Ivoire, a country that I call home, but also is headquarters to the African Bank. So, Madam Dominique Watara, Mr. President, on behalf of the African Development Bank family, I want to thank you for showing us your hospitality on our return to Abidjan. Tonight, I'm honored to present Ms. Vivian Yeda, a former colleague, but currently the director of the East African Development Bank, the award of AA 2014 Business Leader Award. This award to Vivian is in recognition of her leadership in practical and comprehensive development banking, in finance and in business in Africa. Under Vivian's leadership, the African Development Bank has invested in companies that have become blue chip, thus boosting the region's economic development. As some of you know, today, East Africa is among the fastest growing regions in the world. And a great deal of this success is because of leaders and the efforts of such people as Madame Yeda. And so, it is an honor and a privilege to present the AA 2014 Business Leader Award to Madame Vivian Yeda. Congratulations. Mr. President, ladies and gentlemen, I'm really delighted uh, to be here tonight uh, to receive this award, which is uh, a prestigious award and one that um, is very inspirational to me and to my colleagues who work in development in Africa. As you're aware, the challenges in Africa are immense in terms of the social and economic 
development and interaction among the different communities. And the work that we do is instrumental in helping or trying to help or trying to foster the social and economic development of our people. Although I receive this award and it's given to me, I recognize that it's the work of many, many hands, many different people in many different countries. I would not have been able to achieve this award on my own. And I'd like to thank them. I'd like to thank my family for having given me the support, having lived with me in very many different countries, sometimes under difficult challenges. I'd like to thank my current team and colleagues at the East African Development Bank for working very hard and being committed to the development of East Africa and sometimes uh, working in situations that are challenging and situations that are without precedent. I'd also like to thank the African Development Bank, and the president of the African Development Bank, Dr. Kaberuka, who's been a mentor and who has been able to give us support as and when we needed it. As you can see, Madam Kabagambe is here to present the award to me. All this I say is a demonstration of the passion and commitment that Africans have towards the development of their continent. I'd also like to say that this is a very interesting and very exciting time for Africa. As you're aware, all the indicators are positive in terms of growth, economic growth and social development of our people. We have had resources, new discoveries in sectors of natural resources. We also have, uh, we are enjoying a, a youth dividend. Uh, as Madame Kajunju said, 41% of the youth in 2030 is projected to be citizens or nationals of African countries. So this we view as a very important and critical stage in the development of Africa. A lot depends on what we do at this point in time, and this will set the pace and will set the tone of the development of Africa going forward. I'd like to inspire the Africans to rise to the challenge, to plan, and to begin to interact in the world economy and with, in the world business sectors as equal partners, and to begin to chart a way forward we also have to develop our youth. They are our future. And I think here is where we would partner uh, with institutions like the Africa American Institute. I think the work is just beginning. I know you've been in, in the sector for 60 years. I think there'll be more work coming now that you have 41% of the world youth to train. Uh, but this is where I think is an opportunity, not just for Africa, but for the rest of the world. If we are able to train the African youth to be productive and um, effective members of society, then I think the whole global community will stand to benefit. I thank you very much.